Twilight Gets a Puppy By TDR Chapter 39 Boast Barkers Prologue Canterlet, Princess Celestia's Chambers The Day After Meeting Gilda I do apologize Spike, for making you come all the way back here. I'm afraid my letter must have seemed rather curt. I assure you it was not intentional, things have been trying here for the last week. Princess Celestia sighed, pouring herself a cup of tea. Looking over at Spike she couldn't help but smirk as the little dragon stuffed his face with tea cakes and gems. Ross was there as well, though he had opted to order something from the palace kitchens while he was here. It was odd to have her students' brothers here without Twilight herself, but she needed to ask them some questions and the scrolls on Ponyville's history were a perfect chance to get them here. Twilight likely wouldn't let Spike go alone and she was busy when the note was sent to her. Muse Oma Iwinsis. Spike stammered choking suddenly on his mouth full of food. Ross frowned and slapped his brother on the back holding up a napkin in front of him to keep the mouth full of food from spraying everywhere as Spike choked. Celestia raised an eyebrow as Ross rolled his eyes, his long ears shifting and flipping about into differing positions. It's fine Ross. Celestia smirked noting the guard cant the moon dog was using. Though I expected Twilight to have taught him table manners by now. Ross snorted in amusement, having watched his sister eat a hay burger. He was the dog and he had the best table manners of the three. I have the scrolls packed up for you already, though I do have an ulterior motive of course. I would like to ask you a few questions about how things are going in Ponyville for you three. Celestia stated. Ross's ears perked up at that, and he frowned. Between his coughs Spike was looking at her with a hint of worry as well. Celestia sighed, has it really come to this where everyone was suspect of her motives? Well Luna had said she deserved it, but it still hurt. Spike managed to stop coughing and was reaching for a cup of tea. Bark. Ross replied getting another internal winds from Celestia. Guard Kant was good for basic communication but unless you were a master of it, it couldn't hold up for advanced conversations. Ross was good at its use, but he only learned it to talk with a friend of his and never actually studied it, he was still better than the average guard however. He says he has questions cough as well. Spike stammered. Mostly for Princess Luna and why you haven't asked her on our behalf. We've been rather patient, but if your sister knows about Ross. I expect you do. Though she has been dodging all of my queries on the subject, and I do not think now is the proper time to ask Luna about where you came from, Celestia sighed as the tea in her cup started to ripple. What, why not? Spike questioned blinking as he noted Celestia was staring at the door. Both of them looked more concerned as the tea set began to rattle and clank on the table. Woof. Ross questioned. Sister. Luna screamed out as she suddenly appeared in the middle of the group. Ross and Spike both yelped, falling over backwards though Celestia simply put a hoof to her temple as she played the part of the long-suffering sister, the door had not opened. Yes Lulu. Celestia questioned. What is it this time? Blue. Luna stated happily. Ross and Spike peeked their heads over the top of the vibrating table noting Luna's wide-eyed look, wild mane and the fact she was vibrating in place much like Pinkie Pie. What about it Lulu? Celestia asked. Tis everywhere. How did thou gain access to this much indigo pigment? Even the common folk have blue clothing. Tis wondrous to see so much of it all over the place. Is there that much woad being harvested now? Have trade deals with the East been upgraded in my absence? It's artificially colored now Lulu. Celestia sighed. We don't need woad plant or a trade route to the Spice Islands to produce it. Astounding. Luna stated staring into space and stilling herself for a second, before she was back to vibrating around the room like a wind-up toy. It was explained to us about the modern dyes but to see it is still impressive. Ross and Spike glanced to each other then to Luna. Eh Spike and Ross greetings to you. We are sorry for the interruption but blue is our favorite color and it was rare in the past and we are happy to see it everywhere now. 
We would love to stay and chat but we have things to do, we are only halfway done with reading the royal archives. Good morning. Luna smiled patting them both on the head without seeming to move her wings before she was suddenly gone again. Ross blinked as there was no scent of teleportation or any sort of magic, the mare was simply gone. What? Was. That. Spike demanded. I was afraid of what would happen when Luna discovered coffee. I didn't think Moon Dancer would allow her a sip of her drink during her morning classes. Celestia sighed. Wait, Moon Dancer's drink. Spike blinked confused, though Ross cringed. A quadruple shot, s'mores flavored espresso, with whipped French vanilla hazelnut swirl topping. Celestia listed as if reading off a particularly horrendous concoction. Whoa. Spike blinked. All that from a sip this morning. No. Celestia sighed. She's had at least 30 of them over the course of the last six days, six of those were in a big gulp cup, and she hasn't stopped. At. All. We've shut down all 54 shops that serve espresso in Canterlot to stop her from getting them, and the guard captain took a fire axe to the one machine in the castle yesterday. Despite that, we've had reports from Manhattan and Baltimore that she's shown up there for refills and yet the cardiac teams following her haven't noticed her leave the castle. Woof. Ross smirked. Oh yeah, I remember Twilight trying that once. Spike considered. Yes. I do remember when Twilight had one of Moon Dancer's custom drinks. I recall she reorganized the Royal Library in two hours and had just finished the Canterlot Public Library before she finally crashed. Celestia smiled. I hope however that Luna doesn't crash while she's out of the castle, face planting in the middle of a coffee shop will not help her image. Now then, how about you two tell me how things have been going in Ponyville? Author's Note and here we go. There is also a lame explanation as to why Luna and Celestia haven't revealed the secrets of Ross just yet. But I have a perfectly good reason for the delay. It's a later plot point. End author's note. End chapter 39. Boast Barkers. Prologue. <laughs>